All right, guys. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. So I am totally excited today. And uh, I have Mr. Tyler King. So Tyler is the founder, right? I like the founder. Founder mm -hmm. of my favorite software, Less Annoying CRM. So think about that. In less annoying. So that means you can literally log in and you can kind of figure out how to use it without paying two thousand dollars to have somebody set it up for you <laughs> like another <laughs> um uh so people used to change the name we used to be called confusions all right so you know that kind of stuff so you need a, a a coach to figure out how to use a damn software so it's it's intuitive and uh so we're going to talk about business we're going to talk about being organized we're going to talk about you know the power of of you know being organized with 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 your business and I've got some success stories to share and uh but Tyler tell them about yourself and how you this came up this brilliant thing here <laughs> and uh let and let's let's help these people make some money yeah <laughs> sure thing. thanks Curtis um thanks for all the kind words there so yeah a little background here so um my kind of uh, professional background prior to this was uh, being a software engineer and building software at tech startups. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of knew how to build software, but then the company I was working at at the time, this was back in 2007, 2008, uh, put me in charge of setting up Salesforce for the company, which for people who don't know is like the main big CRM. Um, and, you know, I have a degree in computer science. I'm pretty tech savvy. I spent a full month on it trying to get it set up. And it's exactly like you said, like you had to hire consultants and all this. And, um, and I'm not trying to badmouth Salesforce. There's a reason it's like that is because it's mm -hmm. for really, really big companies that, mm -hmm. that need all this sophistication. And we were a tiny startup and it was just too much for us. So that was kind of the light bulb moment for me that was like, yeah, there are a lot of CRMs out there, but there aren't a ton that are meant for someone who doesn't have an IT team, doesn't have the budget for a consultant. They just want to sign up and start using it. Like you do any personal software, like the apps right. on your phone. Right. What if a CRM could be that simple? So that was kind of the background in getting started. That's awesome. So how is Less Annoying now? We started in 2009, so 14-ish years now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and um, and so it's for who's the, who should be paying, ears should be perking up as we talk about this. Who, who are your, your clients? Yeah, great question. Um, so the that last company I was working at, we sold to health insurance agents. And so it actually started out being like, that's that's who I know. And so that was kind of the early days, but it's for any small business that has ongoing relationships with customers. And what I mean by that is it's not for retail. If someone walks in and buys a pack of gum and walks out, you don't really need to develop a relationship with that person. Right. But anyone, whether it's an insurance agent, a financial advisor, a lawyer, a consultant, um, all the way up through, you know, smaller, but multi-person businesses, like small manufacturing companies with high dollar items that they're selling. If mm -hmm. you're having multiple conversations with the same person and it's not, the whole thing's not just automated with technology, that's who we're targeting. That's awesome. And I think that, um, I'll get to throw in some of my two cent here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're talking about that, but I, I, I don't know how you run a business without a good CRM. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, what do you do? I mean, like, because what happens is like, so I'll train people, for example, when I meet somebody and I have it on my phone now, so I put them in the CRM, you know, mm -hmm. and I'd log them and I have different categories and I might connect them. So they go on my email list immediately with their permission. And, uh, then I might, you know, I meet somebody like that, and then I might connect to them with, um, LinkedIn. Right. Mm -hmm. So I can connect on a lot. But so to me, when you meet people, you should have a ritual, but just getting business cards sitting in a shoebox somewhere. I know I'm dating myself, but you know, <laughs> the way they don't, they don't use it. Now you have actionable stuff where you can, you can train the software to remind you of stuff to, okay, you just create a task and say, okay, look, you're going to call so-and-so, or I have uh, two assistants. I both have them on as users and they set my calendar. I send them tasks, call so and so, send them this, schedule a follow up meeting. I just put a task on and boom, they call it happens, shows up my calendar. It's awesome. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I've I've heard whether it's us or other CRM products, I I, I think people refer to it as kind of your digital brain. Yeah. Um, and if you're not using a CRM, your lim your business is limited by what your human brain can do. And uh human brains are good at some things and not good at others. And uh computers are really good at 
remembering to do things and making sure every detail is recorded and keeping it like you never forget anything if it's in a computer. That reminds me of um, what's his name? Uh, getting things done. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Tim, what is his name? Alan. I'm spacing out on his name too, but it's a big thing, right? (laughs) But his thing was your your brain is not designed to remember stuff. So to your point, you need Mm -hmm. to do a brain stuff. You need to get a system that your brain trusts. And then put it in here. So if it's not on my calendar, it don't exist. I mean, I don't even try to remember stuff anymore, right? Yep. <laughs> and uh, so, but it frees you up because your brain is designed to be creative. So if you always have this nagging feeling that I'm forgetting something, right? Mm-hmm. That you're using up bandwidth in your mind to worrying about trying to remember non-important stuff. Where if you just create, use this as your second brain. It, it it frees you up to to think to okay you could plan i look at my week and like um okay here's what's got here's what's going it sends you reminders every day of here's your agenda for the day mm-hmm. I, I didn't the guys it's not a big commercial i just i was excited to meet <laughs> <it>. <laughs> No, I love it. I love, uh, I'm, you know, I'm a huge productivity nerd. So I like, uh, I like talking about this stuff. <laughs> what, what, um, Maybe you just talk to me. So how could I be using it better? See, I always tell my podcast is free consulting for Curtis, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. So, but, <laughs> but I think that um, give me like some, I guess, success stories or like unique ways. I've seen, because I've I've seen realtors, I've seen wholesalers have mm-hmm. a whole special thing on air, like, you know, Pewter Wholesale Real Estate. Um, I've turned it on to mortgage people. Um Anybody that interacts with customers. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, uh, ongoing and you really should strive to have a relationship, you know, and, and build a list because the money's in the list. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, I, I think that's a huge point that people forget about is that that a CRM increases the value of your business. If you ever want to sell it, if you ever want to pass it on to your kids, if you ever want to bring on a new employee and have them be able to do it, the business is more valuable if all the data is in the CRM. Yes. And one of the things that's cool, they have great coaching. So they have these things called pipelines. What's the other thing? It's a pipeline. And then there's a... Um... So we got pipelines, custom fields. Those are the two big customizations. We have groups. Um... Right. So I use all of those. I, I I have to honestly get better with the pipelines, right? Mm-hmm. Of uh, One time I called them, they were trying, can you do this? And then the girls just said, look, just give me... I was like 15 minutes. She built it and put it in my thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you, right? Because, you know, you could get bought because I try not, it's who not how, right? So I'm not even trying to really learn how to do it, but it's, but the, the you can customize it of what is important to you that you need to know. Right. Yeah. And so I might kind of describe it as like, there's different tiers of sophistication of using a CRM and we're on the simpler side. So we, there's a few that we cover. And then there's some, if, if you need to go beyond this, don't use us, use a different product. But right, right. like the basic one is enter contacts and notes about those contacts. Every time you yeah. talk to someone, enter a note, that's it. I, I bet half our customers, that's all they're doing. They're not using any of these fancy features at all. Um, and then kind of above that, you can start talking about, well, what about putting additional information on the context. Let's put my calendar in here. Let's put my task list in here so that when you look at a contact, you're not just seeing notes you entered, you're seeing the full story about your history with them. Yeah. And I think kind of that third tier is what you're talking about with pipelines and pipelines are meant to be process tracking. So it's not just here's a database of contacts. It's who, where is everybody in this process? Where, okay, I've got a thousand contacts in here. 50 of them are active leads I'm working on. And of those 50, uh, 25 of them are qualified. And those are the people I really want to spend my time on. So that's kind of the the more sophisticated users live in their pipelines because every contact's not the same. You want to work on the highest value things you can. Right. I have to get better at that. But I, I think that um, if you, I tell people, just get in and play with it. Like, because it's easy to, to, to figure out. And if you, I got, so <laughs> this is a funny story. So how we met somehow, I, it's probably an automated email, went out to survey my, uh, one of my wife, I turned her on to yeah. it. it. took me five years, but now <laughs> she's in earshot, so I should keep it down. But the um, uh, now it's like, oh, it's the greatest thing. Yes, I've only been telling you for five years, okay? And um, But now, once you can start to dump it, she's an attorney. She can recall stuff, notes, emails she sent, stuff that you, she attaches to it. And so what it does is now it's like saves her time. It's like, boom, I can go to the right to the CRM, pull this up. Here's your bot. Here's your deed. Let me send it to you. Right. Mm-hmm. Done. You know, 30 seconds. And that's, you know, it just helps you become more efficient. And I think that 
as you use it or something, but this in particular, you'll, I find that you're more productive. You can provide better service. Um, I, for me, I see a lot of clients and I forget what I said to who. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think some people view it as like, almost like cold and calculating, like you, it's not a genuine human relationship, but I personally use this for my personal relationships too, where it's like, I've got a bunch of friends and it's hard to keep track of everything they told me and all that. And uh, people feel it, it's like genuine respect to pay to a person to say, I took the time to make sure I'm actually going to remember what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and so I, one of my groups is family mm -hmm. and the family. And so I have a group for that, you know, and then I might take them and pull down if I have the address and put them in this uh, postcard thing I have send out cards and then I'm you know here's my Christmas card list yeah or like which friends have I not hung out with in a while let's let's go reach out to them and see what's going on right so you can set reminders because you have to you know uh what fertilize your relationship you yeah to, you, know, <laughs> you gotta water them or they die like a plant <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, you mentioned earlier bringing, uh, you have a couple assistants involved. I mean, at that point, I don't even know how you do it without a CRM or some kind of software to power it. You can't, right? And and so, but it's good because there, you know, you can just say, all right, can you do this? Can you follow up on this? Can you send them that? And so if you're like me, I was one of the top producers in my insurance company with me and one and a half personal assistance, both on this. And, you know, what I work really hard is to keep my, they're no one job, keep my calendar full. So they mm -hmm. look at the list, they call them, they put on appointments, they keep them busy. They, they look at the thing I'm running late or I need to, re they call to reschedule, they reschedule them. I just see this stuff pop up in the email. Okay. So-and-so moved here to here and I don't have anything to do with it. That I, before that, I, you know, referrals call me after training and get referrals. So we put it, your referral from so-and-so, give them the information. If I get a raw lead, I just, um, what do I do? They send me an email. I will forward that. They'll create a record, put the name of the referral, put the name and the email and they call them and they put them on the counter. And uh, so you just, because the, the fortune is in the follow-up. And mm -hmm. so to your point, when you looked at, um, no, no, when uh, Borders went out of business, the number one thing they bought, Barnes Noble bought from Borders was their list, was their yeah. database, was their mm -hmm. CRM. That was the number one asset of your business is your, your, your clients or customers and your relationship with them. And so hence it's called a customer relationship management system. What, what are the challenges? Like, have you worked through this? Are you, do you see any challenges that businesses have with getting started or or things they could actually make their usage of the tool more effective? Yeah, I think there's a handful. Um, one, my wife is a statistics professor, so she talks about numbers a lot. And her uh, saying is garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Uh, if the data you start with is bad, the, the output's going to be bad. And so that's one of the hard things is just there's uh, there's a lot of products out there that are trying to automate everything. We're going to pull everything down from LinkedIn and do this and that. And uh, none of that's actually your relationship information. You have to enter notes. You have to actually enter stuff into the CRM, which in the short term is a pain, to be honest. That's why our name is less mm -hmm. annoying CRM and not unannoying or whatever. Right, it, right, right. It's a bit of a chore. No one wakes up in the morning and is like, I can't wait to put data into my CRM. Um, so it does take a bit of an investment up front. And then a month or two or three later, you start saying, oh, that I'm really glad I did that because that came in handy now. Um, but if people give up in the first month, they never see that benefit. Right. Um, right. So that's one of the big ones. And then I think the other, the main one that I'd like to call out is people get too enthusiastic about it. It's kind of like spring cleaning syndrome where you're like, I'm going to fix everything in my house. I'm going to put everything where it belongs. And then you just get overwhelmed and don't do any of it. Um, mm -hmm. People, we, we see this all the time. People sign up for an account and they, they go right into pipelines. They customize every single thing they can. They make a million statuses. And the more uh, structure they put around it, the more work it is to maintain. Yeah. And so what we normally advise, if you're starting with this, whether it's Lesson Learning Serum or any other system like this, start out basic. Get your contacts in there and start entering some notes. And then kind of ramp your way up to the, the more sophisticated version rather than diving in the deep end from the beginning. That's a good point. Yeah, like names, 
I'd probably, uh, which is cool. You can, let's say you're on Gmail, you can pull in your Gmail mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, another, you can integrate with MailChimp and MailChimp is, I think they changed. It used to be free up to like yeah. 2000 people. I think it's like $30 a month now or something like that, but you could get all of the landing pages and all that stuff with, with that still pretty well, re- it's pretty easy to use. They have good deliverability, but when I, so I have a, a list called my, uh, my email list, right? So when I put it from the CRM on here, it, uh, what's the word? It, um, like syncs them to MailChimp. Syncs, syncs with MailChimp, right? Mm-hmm. It syncs with my Google calendar immediately. And, um, that less, if you just do that. Yeah. If that's you're it. dangerous, right? <laughs> if you even without linking up to MailChimp, if you just did that, where it linked it up with your Google calendar, is that way you can see your stuff on your phone? And um, and vice it because you put it in. Uh, if I put it in Mailchimp or something, it will sync with the the CRM. I mean, mm-hmm. so either way, you're. And so one of the things here's a report I want to see. Uh, can I tell how many people were added to my list today or this week? Yes. Well, uh, you can do it. Um, the, we have an activity report, which is kind of a summary of a bunch of information. It's every okay. note that gets entered and tasks and so on, but there's one entry per day. That's like 20 contacts got added today or something along those lines. Oh, I got to find how to do that. I don't do that. That's what I, that was, <laughs> I was in the, um, in the, um, some other thing was like, you know, it was a coaching thing. Like, how many people added to your list today? And I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to figure that out. And I really want, that's a key performance indicator. How many new people did you add to your, to your, uh, to your list or to the top of the funnel, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And I might even, depending on how a person uses a CRM, you might say it's more important how many people got added to this status of a pipeline as opposed mm. to the list overall. So we do have filters where you can pull up a report and then filter it down to say, I only want to see people added today or something like that. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to call my coach and, and help me, <laughs> help me figure out how yeah, to do yeah. that. <laughs> and so they have coaching, they have it's email, but then they'll call you. And if they don't call you, somebody else will call you. I mean, this, this, this Tyler, your business, your company's tight. I, I wanted to go to that St. <laughs> Louis thing you had, but I couldn't get out there that time. I was like, yeah. I have nothing to say. Cause I, you know, I think I'm probably only used three or four things very well, but I use the daggone thing all the time. And, um, so I just think that guys, if you will, um, you know, commit to just sitting down and getting something and, putting your names in, do what he's saying and start basic, it will add up um, in clarity, in organization, in your anxiety going down because you feel like you forgot something. <laughs> uh, um, oh, dang, something else I was going to ask you. Say say something smart. I was I forgot what I was going <laughs> to ask you. Um, well, did, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. I was going to say, what didn't I ask you that, that I should be asking you? Um, yeah, you asked earlier, like what can go wrong? And maybe I, there's one other thing I should have mentioned then, which is a lot of people are kind of paralyzed by getting started because they want to pick the perfect product for them. Yeah. Um, and they kind of think, well, one day I hope to have this really sophisticated email drip campaign going on. And one day I want to have really complicated reporting and I'm going to grow a team of 50 people. And how's it going to work with them? And what ends up happening is they never use anything at all. And right. you're especially unlikely to get to a team of 50 people if you don't have a, a CRM when you're one person. Um, so one thing I would advise people is to just um, treat the first thing you try, whether it's less knowing CRM or any other product like it. Um, I'll, I'll just name some others. Go try Pipedrive, try HubSpot, try Nutshell, try Nimble. There's a bunch of CRMs out there, but just sign up and start using it. It's They all have monthly subscriptions that are relatively affordable. Mm-hmm. Pay for six months, and if you don't like it, stop paying. Um, mm-hmm. But People shoot themselves in the foot by wanting perfection and, and thinking, oh, I'm going to get this $500 a month business in a box automation tool. And they just end up with nothing at the end of the day. It's confusing. You don't do anything. I always tell a train, you know, when a train insurance agent sometime or other people. And one of the things that I, always, that I was always taught is that activity produces knowledge knowledge does not produce activity so you want this perfect thing and all these funnels you just you need to sit down and put some names in and get used to it because like we were talking before we signed out what, what improvements would you want to make right or mm-hmm. what, what what are we missing mm-hmm. i you know and if i sit down for about five minutes i might fire you out about 10 you know <laughs> because i use it all the time 
Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I wish it would open. I'll tell you another one. I wish it would open up into Word or something, right? Mm-hmm. Where I could open up the the thing, type a real letter, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, print out and print it mail out. it, or print out and attach to something else, but have it as a doc. You know, that was uh, that yeah. one. I'm a, I'm a old, so I used to use Act. <laughs> Act. I had start with Act 2.0, uh-huh. and um, this is way better. But but I remember that because it had certain things that would just do it all all together. But this is it was you still had to figure out. I went through training to learn how to use that, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, it's this is so cool. I um I think that guys, this will grow your revenue if you get organized. Um, and I tell everybody I run into in a business, I say, "What's your what's your CRM? Like this is like the center of your business." I can't tell stress that enough. Mm-hmm. And um. It feels like I just brought you on so I could have a, 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 <laughs> a, a, a you know, a, a admiration society thing going on here. Because I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, what's new? What do you where do you see the company going? What what are y'all excited about there? Yeah. Um, there's a handful of things we're working. I I come from a product background, so the thing that gets me excited is changes the product. And mm-hmm. maybe there's more information than you want, but the kind of brief history. I started the company when I was 24 years old. I didn't know what I was doing. Wow. Um, I was the only coder, or my, my brother, the co-founder, other co-founder is also technical, but he does more like server administration stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was building the software. It was a really tough transition going from me being the builder to now we have a team of eight, but it, it took a long time to figure out how to hire. We had some people leave the team. We hired some people who weren't productive for several years. Basically from 2014 to 2019, I would say we didn't meaningfully change the product. Okay. And since then, we've been uh, basically building out the infrastructure we need to really turn it into something even better than it is today. We just launched a redesign. We built a new API. Lots of stuff that maybe doesn't change the functionality, but it's just the foundation that you build on. Right. And I think we're about to take off from a product standpoint in terms of we've got a team like we've never had before. We've got experience on how to actually run that team and operate as a larger company. And we're not big. We're a 20-person company, but bigger than Mm -hmm. we were. Mm-hmm. I think we actually know what we're doing a little bit. And mm-hmm. all the ideas, like the, the ones we were talking about that you were saying the things you want before we start recording. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, I would have said, oh, yeah, that's on the list one day. And now I'm like, yeah, we're probably going to start on that in January. Like that, like we're we're really, I think, getting ready to ramp up just making the product better and better and better. Yeah. And it's already pretty daggone good. So that <laughs> is exciting. I, I like like the I like I upload the redesign. So I like the the. Here's another thing. I'll tell you after we get off. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, um, that is great. Oh, this is so much fun. I, I, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell them. What Tyler? They need to go out. And get, I'm gonna put a link to this, um, to the to less annoying in my in the in the show notes. And mm-hmm. look, uh, you know, I'm gonna give you my link so you'll get like I think a thirty or sixty day trial mm-hmm. and try it. Um. It's fifteen dollars, <laughs> you know. <right? laughs> Try use it though. So you got to use it. See, yeah. and then it. Um, um, I I think that uh, if you start doing that, you'll because it's different sections of your business, right? And uh, you you know you want to have a system for managing your data. That's like a critical thing because your number one asset in a business is the list, and I think that and your relationship with that list, and hence customer relationship manager what am i forgetting tyler um i might just to to build on what you just said my my final thought here might just be if you try it out so when you sign up there's like it says what industry are you in insurance financial advisor whatever and we'll kind of customize it but um we have free unlimited phone support call up your crm coach and and say hey okay the insurance agent one or the financial advisor one whatever you are it's a good start uh but I want it to be exactly personalized to my business and they're going to change everything with you to make it perfectly customized. You don't have to like go in and figure it out yourself. So if you're going to try it, the easiest path is to get on the phone with us and have us do most of the work for you. That's what I'm talking about. Who, not how. (laughs) Okay. That's what makes it less annoying. And so that's, um, I'm not sure I knew you could do, I've had that done that, but there's stuff I've been thinking about. I just need to call them. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying, I need to tweak this pipeline. And uh, cause somebody actually built one for me. There's some stuff I want to add. And I was like, I don't feel like doing this. I will call them. 
to after my meetings today, I'm going to call them and have them do that <laughs> because it's I'll, you're you're always evolving, and so it's never perfect, but you know, done is better than perfect. And the mm-hmm. more you use it, the more you'll see, okay, well, because it's like you can automate some things or you can tell it, make you remember where you don't have to remember for it to do stuff that you want to do. So I'll set a task for, all right, call this person. They said, call me in three months. I'll set a task to let's call them, you know, uh, November 15th. And I don't think about it, but then it'll pop up and, and, and you make the call. And so as you work, You'll always have, you know, what I call people coming and going and always have activity. And if you will, you know, um, Tyler, one of the things we talk about in our business is I break my business down into be three parts, before, during, and after, right? So before is lead generation, mm-hmm. right? Lead capture, attract, I call it attract, capture, nurture. And then what happens is you, but capture, you got to get it in something and get it in my CRM. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you don't really come off my list to either I die or you die. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but that is the game change. If you're, you will have people that will stay in touch with them. And then out the blue, three years later, they call us because they're getting mm-hmm. emails from us every day. And so you have to have something to do that. You can't just be chasing the next dollar. And, um, I think, um, we should, one day we'll do a, um, a live demo or something like that. I'll get you. Yeah. Back yeah. That'd be great. Live demo. But Tyler, listen, I appreciate your time. I, I I don't want to keep you. I know you're, you're, you know, God, once you go back to work and fix the thing I want. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but I'm on uh, it. <laughs> yeah, I am so excited to have you on and I'm, I'm so excited to meet you and uh, somebody where I actually know a founder that I use well. So like not somebody out the blue, I use this thing every working hour of my day i use less annoying crm i don't even know what i did i can't remember what i did before it (laughs) (laughs) well thank you so much curtis i I, if 24 year old me could hear you say that i'd be like wow i'm uh, i'm i'm really about to do something that feels so good to hear thank you yes 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 so if you don't know you're the man okay (laughs) so here for me you're the man and um what any way you would like to have them um follow you or see what you got going on or uh yeah sure so i've got um less annoying crm.com is our website but that's not really me uh i'm still grasping on to what remains of twitter or x uh i'm tyler m king there um and i do have a podcast about kind of running a tech startup so if anyone's in the uh kind of tech side uh, entrepreneurship side it's called startup to last it's with uh, a former colleague of mine and we just talk about what we're doing running the business kind of the the inside look at running less annoying crm uh, I will put that in the notes and we'll find it and put that in there and uh, we'll, I'll give you all a link so that you can try it out. And um, Tyler, thank you again for your time today. Yeah. Thank you, Curtis. This was fun. All right. All right. All right, guys, listen, go out there. Uh, if you're in business, if you, I uh, listen, if you're a network marketer, just let me give you all, you know, you need this. All right. So if you're just starting out, you're a part-time real estate agent, this is the center of your business. So I just want to give you all some, so if you're hearing me, and you're a consultant, and if you're hearing me, you're in Mary Kay or whatever, uh, uh, anything where you have that, you want reoccurring business, you need to have a relationship with them. So with that, guys, thanks for listening to the Practical Well Show. So I want to always like to leave you a practical stuff. This will make you money. <laughs> All right. And that's the purpose <laughs> of business to make money. All right. And so go out here, make a great day. Tyler, thanks again. And uh, we're out.